Hello, welcome to Epic Origins. Welcome to the very first video for this channel. This channel is going to be focused on other topics that are not as widely covered in pop culture, such as supernatural world, mythological creatures, and more. Yes, I know people might say, you know what they are. Look at the movies, look at all these different TV shows. Well, in some aspects, they are covered, and it's usually certain mythological creatures, um, and it's played on a lot whether it's in Harry Potter or other supernatural channels or not so you have Grimm as well as let's see the actual show supernatural but then we're just going to cover some other stuff as well that's not as widely known dig into the history of them where they came from how they originated such like that we're going to look at zodiacs superstitions and just just different topics just things I find very much interesting myself and have so since I was a child so Let's go ahead and dive on into that today. Today's topic is going to be covering just seven zodiacs of the world. There are more of them, but I just kind of want to get things started first. But before we begin, if you have a topic that you would like to see covered on this channel, go ahead and leave a comment below so that way I can read it myself, okay? Without further ado, let's dive on in. Seven zodiacs of the world. For many years, people have been looking to the stars to learn more about the heavens, each other, their skills, personality traits, and a purpose in life. Initially used to bring a semblance of structure to apparent chaos, it soon morphed to predict the weather, natural disasters, remedies, troubles, and other events throughout history. Eventually, it progressed to be used as counsel for kings, priests, and other royalty, and for all of us. Whether you believe in astrology or not, chances are high that you still know at least one of your zodiac signs on this list and the traits associated with them. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to us and turn on your notifications so that you never miss a single video. The Babylonian Zodiac Sometimes people confuse the word astrology with astronomy, the study of celestial objects, space, and the universe. Well, 2,000 years ago, they would have been correct because the Babylonians used their charts to predict the frequency of the seasons, certain celestial events, and omens. Even though Babylon is a famous city from ancient Mesopotamia, whose ruins lie in modern-day Iraq, it is often associated with the city of seven hills, Rome. The Romans, who adopted many aspects of Greek culture, also practice astrology and are generally credited for its birth. However, it was the Greeks that introduced it to them by early 4th century BC, the most famous of which was Ptolemy of Alexandria, who lived in Egypt around 100 AD. Alexandria wrote two important works on astrology. His Tetrabiblos provides a summation of contemporary astrology, which was considered the astrological textbook by Arabs and European astrologers, until the 17th century, when Copernicus established that the earth revolved around the sun. Several of the Roman emperors were famous for their use of astrology. For one, Augustus Caesar has his sign Capricorn minted onto some of his coins. The most famous Roman astrologer was Julius Firmicus Maternus, who lived in the 4th century AD and wrote Mathesis as a practical guide to astrology. The 12 surviving zodiac signs are, in order, the heavenly bull, the twins, the crayfish, the lion, the daughter of sin, the scales, the scorpion, the defender, the goatfish, the lord of waters, the swallowtail, and the field worker. As time went on, astrology came to be known as a highly regarded science through the work of Aristotle, Plato, and many other notable figures. The Western Zodiac. Chances are high that if you're watching this, you're from the Western world and are used to the Western Zodiacs, which consists of 12 star signs. The star signs are Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, Cancer, Pisces, and Scorpio. In addition to this, there are four elements and modalities assigned to each of these signs. They are earth, water, air, and fire. The three modalities are 
cardinal, fixed, immutable. In short, the cardinal mode represents the beginning of a season and the power of initiation. The fixed mode represents the middle of the season and the power of sustaining. The mutable mode represents the end of the season as well as the power of change. Those that go by the Western Zodiac believe that the month and date in which you were born influences your personality and characteristic traits. Not only that, but many use the system to help them identify their best partner matches, their career directions, peers, and more. There are many that believe that by studying other facets of the system, such as the moon and sun position, the ruling planet, and 12 houses, we can further break down and understand our own personal mannerisms and thought processes. At one point, astrology ran into some trouble and lost its footing. The sack of Rome in 410 AD saw much knowledge lost in Europe until it reemerged in the Middle Ages. However, while astrology in Europe went through a dark age, it continued to flourish in the Arab world. It was the Arab scholars that preserved the work of Ptolemy and Firmicus and also added information from astrology practices in other places, such as India and China. They also engineered the astrolabe, which is a scientific instrument to track the movement of the stars and planets. It was only with the renewal of intellectual activity in Europe following the Dark Ages that astrology appears to have grown in strength again in Europe. In the 11th and 12th centuries, eager scholars looked to the Arab world for information on this subject. In 1138, the first Latin translation of the Tetra Biblos arrived in Europe. From this time on, based on Babylonian astrology, the European philosophers reintroduced astrology into European culture and developed the system of astrology we use in the West today. The Hindu Zodiac also known as Vedic astrology and the science of light, the Hindu astrology system is extremely ancient, intricate, full of controversy, and get this, it is at least 5,000 years old. The Vedic culture is unique in its sciences, philosophy, theology, and is still taught to students in school and universities today. This system can be divided into three main and six subdivided branches. The three main branches are Siddhartha or Ganita Skanda, which is astronomy, Samhita Skanda, which predicts major events, and Hora Skanda, which is for more detailed predictions. The six subdivided branches are the Gola, Ganita, Jataka, Prasna, Mahurta, and Amita. There are many similarities between the Hindu and Western astrology system. For instance, both systems use planets, signs, and houses to delineate their charts. However, there are many more differences. For one, Western astrology is based on the seasons, the tropical zodiac, whereas Vedic astrology is based on the constellations in the sky, which is called the sidereal zodiac. Another difference is that at least one Western zodiac sign is out of alignment. This means that if you happen to be born as a Leo, it is almost certain that you were born in a Cancer constellation. While the Western Zodiac uses the outer planets, Hindu astrology does not use them because they are not seen to us by the naked eye. The planets are directly related to the energizing factors that are connected to yoga, Ayurveda, and many other Indian metaphysical structures. This astrology system is said to have spread from India to the Persians to the Babylonians to the Greeks, to the Romans, and then to the Egyptians. Fact or fiction? Some have said that there is clear evidence that about 3,000 to 5,000 years ago, the Vedic people were almost certainly using a 12 sign zodiac as well. What do you think? Before moving on, I'd like to completely apologize for butchering any and all names in this section. The Celtic Zodiac, also known as Druid Astrology, and created around 1000 BC, this system is based on your birth date and Druid teachings, who believe that the trees are sacred since they symbolize life, death, and renewal. The Druids would decipher omens and divine events from the rustling of the leaves, which was performed by meditating upon the moon and her motions. Like many other ancient cultures, they observed that children born during certain seasons and cycles 
had many similar qualities in their personalities. However, they followed the 13 moon cycles, the lunar calendar system that is, instead of the stars. Instead of constellations assigned to you, there are 13 tree types for the 13 signs. <laughs> Try saying that five times fast. In addition to, you may also have animals, gemstones, colors, and ruins that correspond with each tree assigned to you. The tree signs are birch, roman, ash, alder, willow, hawthorn, oak, holly, hazel, vine, ivy, reed, and elder. Much like the western zodiac, the Celtic zodiac also has a compatibility system letting you know whom you are most compatible with. For instance, if you are a birch, then you are most compatible with the vines and willows. So which are you? Are you a protective gentle giant like the oak tree? A charming trailblazer as the alder? A keeper of secrets always on the prowl for a great story like the reed? Or highly creative, intuitive, and patient as the willow? Let us know in the comments below. The Egyptian Zodiac. From their polytheistic ways and biblical stories to their monumental structures, ancient Egyptians were known for many wondrous feats. Just like most ancient societies, they looked to the skies and their gods and goddesses for help in their daily lives. When it comes to their astrology system, they also used the 12 constellations, which for them formed the 36 deacons, or star groups, with each deacon having its own ruling planet and lasting for 10 days. Each sign is equal to three deacons for a total of 36 days. There are also colors, professions, and compatibilities ascribed to them. The ancient Egyptians believed that the individual sign represents your character, behavior, and skills. While two people can share the same signs, their distinct deacon and ruling planet would drastically influence their personality. While it is generally accepted that all but one of the zodiacs are based on the gods and goddesses, many cannot agree as to which deity is assigned to whom, along with the correct date. This is because we just don't have enough information about this system to accurately document it. Thus, depending on your research, you may come to find that you are, in fact, assigned two or three different deities, and there may be more than one date assigned to it as well. So, if you are looking for a more precise method of determining your place in the universe, this system just doesn't cut it. Side note, while many people may disagree with the pronunciation of the names of the deities, we must keep in mind that the names given to them are very much modern and best guesses as to how they may or may not have been pronounced since they were written in hieroglyphics. For the sake of research and conversation, they had to be changed into something more easily pronounceable. Take Anubis, for instance. His Egyptian name is Anpu or Enpu. However, after the Greeks arrived in 7th century BC, their rendered version of his name became Anubis, which many people still only know him by today. It is very similar to how people immigrated to the U.S. and had name changes, more so their last names, for this very same reason. The Native American Zodiac. If you're looking for a people that share a deep connection with nature and an aim to harmonize life with the natural events of the world, look no further than a Native American. It is said that the ancient Native American people developed a system to follow the rhythms of life 5,000 years ago, thus leading to their astrology structure. The Native Americans revere animals and believe that each animal plays an important role in their daily lives and have their own symbolic meaning. The lores are filled with many prime characters. For instance, the Chippewa legendary hero, the Great Fisher, who is sometimes portrayed as a man and sometimes as a sort of weasel. Each person is assigned an animal totem or power animal, which is an animal spirit. However, your birth totem is not the same as your spirit animal or spirit totem. Totem is a sacred object, spirit being, or a symbol of a tribe, clan, individual, or family. Depending on your direction in life and the tasks that need to be accomplished, different animal guides come in and out of your life and are with you forever, both in the physical and spiritual world. 
Your birth totem, on the other hand, can tell you a lot of things about your own personality, your abilities, your responsibilities, and any negative traits. This system has some confusing components. For instance, some sources state that it is the crow and not the raven, and the hawk, not the falcon, that are in this system. However, it is mostly agreed upon that the following are the appropriate signs. Otter, wolf, falcon, beaver, the stagger deer, woodpecker, salmon, bear, raven, snake, owl, and goose. You may even have an element, ruling planet, direction, as in north, a season, a clan, a color, and a stone associated with your sign. Are you looking for a match made in heaven? You may even be able to see whom you are most compatible with. No doubt about it, the Native Americans are one spiritual folk. The Chinese Zodiac. What are your first thoughts when you think of the Chinese Zodiac? Dragons? Rats? It seems that the Native Americans were not the only ones that believed that one could relate to an animal. Just like the Western Zodiac, the Chinese Zodiac has 12 signs. However, the difference is that it is based on a year you were born as opposed to the month and the day. The 12 signs in order are rat, ox, tiger, rabbit, dragon, snake, horse, goat, monkey, rooster, dog, and pig. Each sign has a personality trait and, in modern times, there have been compatibility matches associated with them. Each of these signs has one of the five elements of earth, metal, water, wood, and fire associated with them, rotate between yin and yang, and last five years per sign, making the entire cycle take 60 years to complete. Come to find out, there are many stories as to how and why the zodiac signs ended up in the order that they did. Well, one such story goes, Long ago, there was a race to the heavenly gate. Jade Emperor wanted to select 12 animals to be his guards. He sent the immortal being into this world to spread the message that the earlier one went through the gates, the better ranking they'd have. On the first day, the rat and ox arose the earliest. When the rat came upon a river, it waited for a long time before seeing the ox arrive. The rat soon jumped on the ox's ear to ride across, which the ox did not mind. However, upon reaching the other side of the river, the sneaky rat raced to the gates to the emperor. Thus, the rat came first and the ox second. The tiger and rabbit, though competitive and fast, came third and fourth. The good-looking dragon came to the gates in fifth and, upon seeing him, the emperor said that his son could be sixth. However, the dragon's son was not there, but the crafty snake was and said that the dragon was his adoptive father. So, the snake came in sixth. The horse and goat were so modest with each other that they let one another cross the gates first. The emperor saw this polite gesture and ranked them seventh and eighth. The poor monkey had fallen behind because they were jumping through the trees and stones. Last were the rooster, dog, and pig. Did you know that a cat was in the race to the heavenly gates? Well, obviously it didn't make it. That's because the cat always picked on the rat which made the rat very angry. So the rat sought revenge upon hearing of the emperor's race. One day, the cat made rat promise to keep them informed of the emperor's party. On that morning, however, the rat quietly left without informing the cat while the others raced onward. The cat did not wake up until the race was almost over. By then, it was too late and the cat did not make the cycle. What are your thoughts and comments on this? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you discover anything new that you didn't know before? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget, like and subscribe. And turn on your notification bell so that you never miss a single video. Until next time.